Next guy coming to the stage. He's performing all over Las Vegas. I think he's fantastic. I know you will think he is fantastic. Give it up for Garrett Hart! What is up, man? Man, it's good to see y'all. Y'all look awesome tonight. Y'all look great. Give yourselves a hand, man. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have just ever the ever so slightest little accent. Just a little small one. I don't know if you picked up on it or not. Uh, I was born and raised in Arkansas. Hell yeah. Woo, motherfucking pig, right? That's what I like to hear. <laughs> No, I was, I was born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I moved out here a few years ago, and having this accent, man, out here, it's different for sure. Give, people give me some weird looks. There's pros and cons, man. Pros, people automatically trust me a little more for some reason. I don't know what movie you saw or what TV series you saw that you think Southern people are so trustworthy, but okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. There's cons to it too, though, man. No one's ever just going to hear me talk and be like, I'm sure that guy has some really well thought out political opinions. No one ever assumes that about me for some reason. People just impose their automotive questions on me. You know, people just walk up and hear me talk and they're like, hey man, can you fix the brakes on a 94 Ford Taurus? And I'm like, no. Why would you say that? People get more upset when I don't know it as opposed to when other people don't know it. Like, come on! Yes, you do! Yes, you do! The worst part, worst part of all, is when people ask me my favorite type of donut is, I have to really pronounce the D whenever I say, white powder, you know? People make assumptions. I was in a 7-Eleven one time, and uh, we were in Northtown, needless to say, and uh, my, buddy, my buddy was getting snacks, I was getting drinks, he said, do you want some snacks? And I said, yes, give me some of those little donuts. He said, what kind? I said, white powder, like that. And I saw, I saw some Vato turn around and his teardrop tattoo was pulsating on his face. You know, I was like, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, no, 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 no. No. I, uh, it was rough, man, it was rough. I grew up, like I said, I grew up in Arkansas. Uh, I grew up kind of white trash. <laughs> All right, let's level with one another. I grew up real white trash. <laughs> like, I basically came out of the womb wearing a sleeveless Pantera t-shirt. You know what I mean? That type of white trash. <laughs> I had a rat tail halfway down my back by the time I was two. When I was 18 months old, I was able to do this. No clue what dip was at that time, you know? No clue what it was. Yeah. Come by it honest though, man. <laughs> I come by it honest. Both my folks are real white trash. Like, my mom, I called her for Mother's Day and I said, hey mom, did you get that Mother's Day gift I sent you? And she said, yeah, you know what? You may be a son of a bitch, but you're not a bitch of a son. Hangs up. <laughs> like, that is so aggressive. You're gonna have to take it down a couple notches. But you gotta think, it was like 9 a.m. in Vegas, so back in Arkansas it was like Miller time. So, it made sense, it made sense. My dad, he's not much better. He, my dad, my dad looks like if all the members of Leonard Skinner had magic rings and stuffed them together and created a super person. That's what he looks like. He's a big NASCAR fan, my dad. He called me up the other day and he said, how are things going? I said, good. He said, are they still racing? He's like, where? He said, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Where do you think? I was like, well, I don't know what they're doing up there right now. I know they just got finished with EDC. He goes, EDC? What the hell is that? I said, uh, well, it's the Electric Daisy Carnival. You know, they, they have it every year in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, it's an electronic music festival. People go out there, dance do some drugs, camp out for a few days. He got mad as hell. He's like, God damn, they're out there desecrating hallowed ground. <laughs> that's a place for racing. He went on this tirade. He goes, that's a place for racing, not a place for your beep boop sounding like Stephen Hawking in his chair type music. <laughs> so I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. The phone was quiet for a second. He goes, Dale Earnhardt didn't die for this. <laughs> 
girl. And he, start, he starts grum grumbling to himself, and I'm pretty sure I heard him say, Lightning McQueen didn't die for this either. <laughs> he wasn't in NASCAR. Now, my folks came out to visit me. My parents, my extended family, came out to visit me here in Vegas. And guys, I don't know about you, Vegas locals, everyone. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Vegas locals. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of the strip. Man, I'm tired of Fremont almost. It's, it's, it's over. You know what I mean? I'm over it. So I've been getting into more like the natural beauty of Vegas, like Mount Charleston, uh, Red Rock, Valley of Fire, all that stuff. So my folks come out and they say, hey, what are we going to do now that we're in Vegas? I was like, you're the one who came to me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, how about we go up to Mount Charleston? There's a whole bunch of pine trees. There's beautiful houses built into the side of the mountain. And I just hear, fuck all that gay shit. How about you take my picture in front of the fake Eiffel Tower? I was like, grandmother, did you bring your meds? Grandma, you've been off the plane for an hour and a half. How are you going to start yelling, oh, I'm going to need you to take it down a notch. I need you to take it down a notch. So finally, we decided we're going to go see a show. I said, what kind of show do you guys want to see? They said, let's go to a magic show. Best magicians in the world are here in Vegas. I said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, I don't want to say the guy's name because I don't want to blast him, you know. But it was a terrible magician. The guy was awful. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and say his name. Like, guys, let me tell you. Magic Mike, bad magician. Very bad magician. He gets up there looking all just slippery as hell. You know what I mean? Wearing nothing but his underwear. I'm like, I was excited at first. Not, not because of what you think. Not because of what you think. No. Because I was like, how is he going to pull off these tricks wearing a Speedo? That's, that's pretty impressive, right? He gets up there and he like rolls his abs at me. And I'm like, oh. I said, hey, man, when does the magic start? He goes, it's happening right now, baby. Oh. He did one trick the whole time I was there. He did one trick. This lady handed him a dollar, stuck it in his pants. I, like, I saw that. I saw that. There's no illusion there. I saw you. Man. You guys, you guys are a great audience, like I said, man. Doing stand-up in Vegas isn't always easy. This is a rough town for stand-up comedy. I was doing stand-up in a bar one time, and uh, there was this guy in the audience who was yelling at all the comedians, and finally I get up, and he yells at me, and I said, hey man, what is your problem? And I'll never forget the way he worded this sentence. I did 22 years in the pen. What have you ever done with your life? <laughs> Could you not think of a better way to word that? I was like, I don't know, downloaded one song off a CD instead of buying the whole CD? That's what I've done since you've been in the pen. I saw all three Matrix movies, you know? I've never done anything of questionable morality for another Oriental chicken ramen pack, you know? I understand they're good, but they're not that good, jeez. Come on, have some decency, sir. What have you ever done with your life, man? Can't believe it. Oh, man. Did you guys, did you guys see on the news that uh, Elon Musk is looking for rocket mechanics for SpaceX? Yeah, it's awesome. He's going to pay people like $125,000 a year to work on rockets, which is great. But if Elon Musk really knew anything about money, he would just hire a couple tweakers out here on Fremont, pay him two packs of smokes up front, and tell him he'll pay him when the job's done, right? That's more economical. To be fair, like, that's the only type of mechanics I want working on my stuff. Guys who are like, only wear sleeveless shirts, missing a few teeth, and only speak in a mixture of like, Grumbles and sound effects. You know what I mean? Like, we got her up there and we're like, whoa! <laughs> Put that right feeling up, pop it in, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah! You know? Those are the only type of mechanics I trust. I don't know about you guys. That's who I'm working on my, th my stuff. It's crazy, man. Crazy, dude. Yeah. Elon Musk, man. That guy, he's something else. I, uh, I, I was reading, I've been reading into more religious stuff recently, you know? I've been reading about different religions. And uh, I read this thing about the Buddha. And the Buddha said, one of the tenets of Buddhism is, uh, unless gluttony can be conquered, all other spiritual pursuits are lost. Have you guys ever seen the Buddha? <laughs> motherfucker never conquered gluttony in a day in his life. You think they made those statues to make him even look even fatter? No, they made him, they told him, to, he told him to trim that statue down a little bit. He's like, 
He's like, come on, guys, I'm not that fat. They're like, okay. <laughs> Since he's watching and all. I read that online, actually. I read that, that tenet of Buddhism online, and I go, shut up. I love being online, man. I love being online. Old people are ruining Facebook, right? They're getting too comfortable on there. That's the problem. They're commenting on corporate Facebook pages. Walmart makes a post. Come try out our new $12 chicken cutlets. And they're like, my son died four days ago. <laughs> Take a profile picture way too close to their face. <laughs> Old people love that shit, man. They love it. They love it. I like being on Twitter too, man. I have like a hall of fame of things that I've done on Twitter. One of them is I got blocked on Twitter by a guy named Adam Richman. You guys know who that is? That's the guy from Man Vs. Food. He blocked me on Twitter, yeah. Apparently if you tweeted a guy every day for 18 months, let me see what your shits look like, he blocks you. Like bro, you just ate a six pound burrito. We're all thinking it. I'll be the voice of the people, I don't care. I do not care one bit. I'll be that guy. I think YouTube is like the, the home base for crazy people online. It really is. I saw, I saw a YouTube video the other day, and uh, it was called The Oldest Song Ever Written. And it was apparently they had found these notes uh, in a pyramid in Egypt that people had scribed to kind of figure out how to play a song. And so they put it, the oldest song ever written. It's making me lose faith in humanity because the first comment was, how the fuck did they record this? <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. I, uh, I'm in the military. I'm active duty Air Force. Yeah. I got a couple of my buddies here tonight. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, guys. I, uh, I've learned a lot in my Air Force career. I honestly have. I've learned a lot. I learned that, like, I, some of the best advice I've ever received was in my Air Force career, in basic training, in boot camp. People always say, oh, it's so hard. You know, they break you down to build you back up. And they did. I got some of the best advice of my life. I was in there, and uh, they're teaching us to stand at attention. You know, like that. Stand at attention. And I just kept fucking it up. I kept fucking it up. And they'd be like, oh, get it together. Kept yelling at me, kept yelling at me. Finally, he says, I'm about to lose it if you mess this up one more time. And of course I mess it up one more time. He gets up real close to my ear. He leans over and he goes, hey, unfuck yourself right now. <laughs> That's the best advice I've ever gotten. I try and live by that advice every single day. I really do. No, but like I said, uh, I, I, I am in the Air Force. I've been in for like six years. I'm, I'm probably getting out next year. And there's some things I'm looking forward to whenever I get out, right? I'll be able to grow facial hair, right? That'll be nice. Me shaving now is like me mowing a gravel yard, but still, I'll be able to try and grow facial hair. I'll be able to smoke legal weed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be able to commit crimes and blame it on PTSD? What's up? Home invasions, here we come. All right, guys, that's been my time. My name's Garrett Hall. Thank you guys so much. Give it up, give it up again, Hall, everybody! <laughs>